everyone. Welcome to another Peaceful Solution Character Education Certification course. Everyone in the auditorium can be seated. Uh, welcome to all of those that are joining online from many different countries. Thank you for joining us. And if you're new to these classes or if you haven't been joining us for very long, we're in the RESPECT unit. and We're more than halfway through the RESPECT unit by now though. Uh, it's the fourth of five in the junior high series. There's five units starting out with the character, the acceptance, the respect or the self-control unit and then the respect unit which is what we're in and then we will get into the responsibility unit. You can download these if you don't have the book. We still get a lot of emails asking us about how to get the books. Uh, if you're on our Facebook page, um, I know some people might be watching through the Peaceful Solution app, but if you're on our Facebook page, you, there's a drop down menu and you can download free of charge the PDF uh, book of the character, the acceptance, the self-control, and the respect unit. And if you already have um, a hard copy, there's nothing wrong with downloading that copy because then you'll have a searchable text. And if you want to search a certain subject, you can actually, since it's PDF formatted, you can just search uh, whatever word you're looking for or topic you're looking for, and it will take you to where uh, you need to find those topics in every book. And it helps when you're preparing your class and it'll help uh, bring continuity uh, in with your teaching and of course building on what we bring out in our classes with building one book or one block upon another and that's truly what we're looking to do is to take this just as the author laid it out and to make a nice smooth road to go through so we have smooth sailing with curveballs and pitfalls and everything else you could imagine on the way. Um, but here we're going to be starting off, we're going to look at LP5E. We're in chapter 5. We call this the, we call it the bullying chapter. This is the one we've spent a lot of time teaching in schools. But it's uh, actually called Responding to Disrespect. And of course that involves a lot of bullying. And we're going to talk some more about bullying. David left off and he was going through some facts and things that needed to be done. And really what a challenge it is to deal with someone when they're bullying you but also accepting the fact that bullies you know those who are bullied tend to bully others also and and of course we could probably look into our lives when we really identify what bullying is and we could probably identify where we've done that ourselves to someone where we try to make ourselves feel inferior you know put ourselves above someone else and try to do something or persuade somebody to do something through a type of force and that can that can really be a form of bullying especially if it's something that is bringing forth negative character now if you're trying to encourage someone to do something that's positive well I don't know if you would actually call it bullying if somebody's trying to tell you you need to brush your teeth and you can't go to bed or you can't do this until you brush your teeth I'm not for sure you could say your parents are bullying you when they're trying to get you to do something that's proper but here on LP5E, we're going to reread the procedure. Now, David covered this about halfway, and we're going to be starting off uh, rehearsing a little bit, but also picking up where he left off and, and moving forward. So on L, uh, Lesson Plan 5, page E, it says, it says, Explain to students that disrespect can also come from many people uh, they are not familiar with. In situations like this, they will need to use other methods to deal with disrespect. Have students read the sections titled A Different Approach, Bullies, Let's Take a Closer Look at Humility, found on pages 133 to 136. Instruct students to read the article Bullying in Schools and discuss the answers to the questions as a class. Stress that failure to appropriately handle the disrespect of a bully can lead to loss of life and that's something that's very important that we really grasp in this is that it does lead to a loss of life and and uh, David has talked about it and I know William and Catan has also mentioned this and it talks about and we'll get into more of it of um, you know the leading cause of death and and of course you get into the first the second and the third for teenagers or students that are ages of 12 um, 10 through 13 is where you get into more of the suicide. But when you get into 12 to 18 and you get the automobiles involved, well, that changes a little bit. But there's the top three causes of death for teenagers are all preventable. Every one of them are preventable. It's not disease, which disease can also be prevented, 
Um, but you don't really see that when you're 10, 12, 13. You, you think you're going to live forever. You're not really considering the consequences of your actions. But when you're talking about drowning, um, drugs, suicide, auto accidents because people are taking risk-taking behavior, um, it's possible to get into an auto accident when you're just going down the road minding your own business too, but that's not the case with the studies that have been shown for the majority of deaths for children or young teenagers in that age category. But we're also going to have students read the section putting it all together on pages 137 to 138 in their handbooks and complete the accompanying exercise. And notice we have a note here, it says for variation the scenarios can be role played and discussed as a class. So if you want to do that, if you have the time, if you have the room, obviously in an auditorium setting like we have right here, we would not be able to do that. But if you have a classroom setting and you have the time allotted for it, uh, we've done this before in our peaceful solution classes that we have here when we're in a classroom setting. And we've actually had a lot of fun and enjoyed it. So. It, it can be done both ways. It's always better if you can uh, play an active role in it and there's more enjoyment that comes from it. So looking over to page 134, uh, David finished 134 and, and we were going to pick up in 135 but we just want to cover briefly some things that he has spoke about and then we're going to move along because we're in the section of course entitled Bullies. And under that section on 134 where you see the title there, Bullies, in bold print, it says, although bullying can take place in families between older and younger siblings, the type of bully that we will focus on here is the school bully. School bullies are not friends to their victims. Remember what a friend is. Remember uh, chapter 4 of the acceptance unit. We went through uh, the stages of what it is to examine and to choose a friend to decide if you want to be friends with that person or not. There's a whole process to make sure that you're applying these things and they're very important not to forget and when you get to this section and, and someone might ask, well why, why can a bully not be my friend? Well a bully can be your friend if they change the way they're acting. Anyone can be friends as long as they have the same goals, the same focus, the same idea. Now it doesn't mean you'll be the best of friends um, we don't, sometimes we don't define people who are friends that you see every day. It makes you smile when you see them and, and you get along and you're working towards the same goal. Well, all of those people can be classified as friends. But if you're trying to do what's positive and you have somebody that's selling drugs on the street corner, well, that might be a challenge there. I don't know if you can find a way to make friends with that person unless you can help them get past what they're doing that's negative. So, you know, think about that as we, continually, as we continue to go through this. It says, bullies, bullies usually victimize others because they appear to be weaker, younger, or different from them in some way. Bullies tease, antagonize, and take advantage of others. Uh, they are habitually cruel and often take pleasure in seeing others in distress. You know, if we could put our first slide up, this is what, you know, when we think of bullying, this is kind of what we we really think of when we think of bullying. It's always, you know, the bigger guy picking on the, the younger guy, the one that's a little bit smaller, a little bit more feeble, uh, the guy that's considered the nerd of the school or whatever, and then of course the one that's doing the bullying is always the one that's supposed to be the, you know, the buff guy and he's going around doing all these things. But that's really not true. That's just the image we get into our mind. And if you grew up when I grew up, if you go to the next slide, this was probably the most popular example we were given of bullies. You know, and it was a movie that came out called The Karate Kid, and of course this was one guy bullying the other guy. And when you watch the movie, and the only reason I show this slide, because in the movie, to get even or to make the guy not bully, he had to fight his way through, and he had to beat everybody up. You know, and that's how he got to do it, and then everybody liked him after that. Which, no, no, they didn't. You know, that whole movie was made after the boy being bullied. Every time a new movie came out, he was being bullied. And fighting never really solves the problems. You know, and we tend to think that it's, you know, bullying takes place at the schools, which is what we were concentrating on. But if we go to the next slide, you know, bullying can take place within families. Now, I never had a sister, so I, I never did this. But I had two brothers, and we did something similar to this. We didn't have long hair, but we did things to each other to antagonize each other. And, you know, I have children that are boys and girls, and I've seen this uh, take place in my own family, where children will do things to antagonize 
Uh, now they don't do it when the parents are looking. It's when you turn your head and you hear someone scream or yell and you turn back and you see the hand coming back. You know, you almost got to put a camera in every, every room of your house to catch it all if you wanted to. But, you know, bullying can, it goes through our lives in many different ways and we tend to try to think, well, it's only children that bully. But looking at the next slide, you know, adults do it just as much as children do, if not more. And we're going to get into some facts about bullying tonight, just a few. There is an enormous amount of information that has been gathered on bullying because of the problems that have been faced with in society because people bullying each other. Um, we see bullying take place, whether it be in the, uh, you can look in the Congress and Senate of, the, of Washington, D.C., the United States Capitol, and see bullying. You can watch nations bully each other. Um, you can see states bully each other. You know, um, you, you can see all of these things take place on a high-level scale, but we also see it take place in a local area or a local scale. But bullying, is, it's, a, it's a lot like I would compare it to, um, and I only use this because it stuck in my mind one time um, when I heard it used as an example by the author of The Peaceful Solution. He said, it's a lot like when you know somebody in your family that was murdered. When you hear about a murder, you don't truly understand how hard that is on a family unless you yourself experience that. If you have a parent, a brother, a sister, you know, a grandmother, a grandfather, uh, you hear about these things take place, but until it actually takes place in your family, you don't truly understand the impact that has. And other people who have been through that really view that very differently. You know, the people that I'm talking, that are hearing me talk right now, if they've experienced this, what, what I just said, well, they're replaying in their mind what they went through. But people that have never experienced it, they're trying to imagine, well, what would it be like? Uh, a very different mindsets, and you can have a classroom and the focus goes very differently, you know, and, and then you can have, I've had students that have actually committed the act and regretted it, bitterly regretted it. You know, we tend to think when somebody commits an act like that that there's no remorse, but we tend to forget that sometimes people can lose self-control just for a split second and really do a lot of damage. And, you know, with all three of those groups of people I just mentioned, all three of those groups can be positive people. They can do great things. Um, you know, people make really bad choices and really bad mistakes but sadly a lot of this is due to people made decisions on what they were trained to do and of course if you've ever been taught well if that bully hits you you hit him back you better not come home unless you you knock that boy's teeth out if he beat you up you know or if he hits you if you let him beat you up you're going to get beat up twice when you get home you know and sadly that's some of the things that are said well if you teach a child that and you tell a child that, what do you think a child's going to do? Well, if somebody's bigger than them and they think that they've got the upper hand, well, they're going to have to go get the upper hand by doing what? Well, go get a gun. That's the easiest thing to do. That's what everybody else is doing. And when you think about a lot of people, you know, I've taught in many prisons along with the other teachers of the Peaceful Solution, and I have friends that have been in prison. There's people sitting in this auditorium right now that have been into prison have went through, uh, what, seen what it's like to have to suffer because of a lack of education or the lack of somebody showing them how to make a different choice. Uh, some people honestly have never been taught that. And when we try to convince ourselves as a society, no, everybody should know better, can someone explain why everybody should know better? Because there's a time in our life where we're all going to make a bad choice or a mistake you know, because why? Well, we didn't know any better. Didn't know you're supposed to do this instead of that. You know, I've seen, I can tell you uh, an experience we had when we went to Washington, D.C. one time. Here in Texas, when you go to the pump, um, gasoline has a red handle, diesel has a green handle. When you go to Washington, D.C., diesel has a yellow handle and gasoline has a, red, has a green handle. And I watched someone put diesel in their gasoline tank one time uh, because they thought it was gasoline because of the color of the handle. They got so used to seeing the color of the handle, they picked it up, stuck it in, you know, but in that, uh, it was Maryland actually, we were in, diesel had a yellow handle. Well, yellow usually goes with kerosene in Texas, so it kind of confused them. Well, 
you can sit there and you can scream, yell, and shout, or you can have the vehicle towed in and have the bypass on the fuel pump done and pump it all back out. You know, so we could all do that. Anybody can do something like that. Uh, even if you do know what color the handle is, you can still put the wrong fuel in the wrong tank. It's very easy to do. Now, that's not life-threatening. That just destroys your automobile if you try to drive it. But we're talking about things that are truly life-threatening. Now, if you look here, it says bully can, bullying can take uh, the form of verbal abuse, physical abuse, stealing, and destruction of property. You know, and those are all ways that people look to hurt other people. And if we can go to the next slide, I just I just took four of the facts, and there was uh, there was so many of them. It was it was it was hard to even choose which ones to take because there's a lot of things that go on in our society that's just heartbreaking. But the number one fact, and this was the number one fact that was posted also, um, it says in the United States, one in five students ages 12 to 18 has been bullied during the school year. Now that's reported bullying because when we went through and we asked, we took our own survey when we went into schools and we found four out of five in the schools that we taught had said that they had been bullied. And also here, the second one, it says the most common reported type of bullying is verbal harassment. That's 79%, followed by social harassment, 50%, physical bullying, 29%, and then cyberbullying, which is 25%. And then cyberbullying comes along, you know, when you get the internet and, of course, social harassment. You know, the sad part about social media and other forms of putting out information anybody can say anything and sadly some people in the in this world think well if it's on the internet it's got to be true they don't allow anything that's not true on the internet now they'll believe that and then till you post something about them that's a lie and then they're oh no 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 it's a, you know, it, it became false today I'm a believer now but sadly that can be done and I've seen uh, people that I'm close with, I've, had, I've been through it myself, where people will post things about you on the internet because they get mad at you, um, and they get upset with you, and they'll post things they know are a lie, and you have to go through a whole process to get it back off. Now, one thing that I've learned, and I learned this from the author of The Peaceful Solution, don't let things like that bother you. You can't, because when you're out teaching and you're out doing things, people are going to say things. Don't let the little things bother you. If you do, it will drive you nuts. You know, and if, I guarantee you, everybody sitting in this room right now and everybody watching online, I guarantee you either somebody has said something about you you don't know or they're going to say something about you you don't know and most likely it will not be factually correct. And if you think that's wrong, just give it a week and then come back and check in and see how it went because that's pretty much how things go. Um, here in Texas, people blame it on the heat, but it's not the heat because it takes place in the winter too. Well, then it's the cold, you know, that's what it is. Well, here going back to the slide, you see the third uh, statistic, which is pretty interesting because this is at an age where both boys and girls, their bodies are starting to go through physical and chemically, uh, chemical changes in their body. And it says sixth grade students experience the most bullying. So that's the sixth grade. And the fourth one is students are less likely to report bullying as they get older. Only 39% of high schoolers notified an adult of uh, bullying. Now, you know, that can be the challenge because that's who we're supposed to go to, you know, an authority figure, somebody that can help with the situation. Um, and we always tend to think that ignoring it, it'll go away. Well, there are some things that and take place and you can you know turn your head and go the other way and it'll go away but if there's somebody bullying you or somebody mistreating you verbally physically um, and that's going on continually the only way to put a stop to it is go to someone that can help you go to a trusted authority go to an adult don't go to another teenager you know and try to you know well now we'll get three and four and we'll beat the you know what out of this guy we'll 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 teach him a lesson well, that, that's been proven not to work, you know. Uh, it's been proven not to work on a scale of a society and a community, and it's also been proven not to work on a global scale with countries uh, fighting other countries. So these things, this retaliation doesn't work, and always remember what the author of The Peaceful Solutions uh, said. His father made mention in front of him, and it stuck in his mind. 
Two wrongs don't make a right. Never get even or fight back. It will never solve a problem. You know, and it's very important that we always base our decisions on those things. Now, it's not easy to do, as we're going to get into tonight, uh, but it's something that we're faced with. Continuing along here on page 134, once again, it says, if you're ever in a situation where someone is verbally abusing you at school, the first thing you should uh, do is maintain your self-control and do not respond with anger. And, of course, that's where the STOP acronym comes up, and then you also have the the second, third chapter of the self-control unit. And I bring that up because that's talking about dealing with emotions and how to process anger. And we got advice in there on how to do it. Uh, and it's really, it's not one particular page. It's two uh, complete chapters that actually help deal with that. So it would not hurt as a teacher, if time allows, to go back and pull just a couple things from that. We're going to go through some things tonight through the, uh, from the self-control unit uh, to put them back into our minds. Continuing on, it says, As with all other acts of disrespect, responding with anger will only make the situation worse. Remember, we've already talked about it. It's like adding fuel to the fire. If you retaliate, it's just going to make a situation worse. Stop, think, recognize that verbal abuse is the first step to bullying. Most acts of bullying start with verbal abuse in the form of teasing, name-calling, or put-downs. It is reported that students receive an average of 213 put-downs per week, or 30 a day. That seems like a very busy bully when you're saying that kind of stuff. But I know I don't associate with people like this. I used to know people like this when I was in school, uh, when I worked in a manufacturer uh, facility, manufacturing furniture. I knew people then... Um, because they were people I worked with, everything that come out of their mouth was putting someone else down. I don't know if they ever had anything come out of their mouth that was not negative about another individual. You know, and I know in my life, I have met quite a few people that would be defined as narcissistic, you know, which is not just a word, that's actually a mental disorder. And a lot of people don't realize that. That is actually diagnosed as a mental disorder. And there's some people that, no matter what they do, there's nothing positive they can say about somebody else, and there's nothing negative they can find in themselves. You know, it's always someone else's fault. And, of course, they tend to blame someone else. And you can imagine, imagine if you're being blamed for something that you don't even know what they're talking about. You know, it's your fault it was 100 degrees today. You know, and you're sitting there thinking, what did I have to do with this? You know, well, you told me it was 100 degrees. If you hadn't have told me, I would have thought it was 80, and I would have felt fine. Um, I've heard that before, too. Looking over to page 135, you know, it's foolishness when you get into stuff like that, but bullying is pretty much based on foolishness. It's people doing things to, uh, you know, as we read in the second chapter of the character unit, verbal abuse can be worse than throwing a punch. It can be worse than beating someone. When a person goes through verbal abuse every day, every day, every day, you can mentally destroy a, a human being. You know, and, and the bullying that we're thinking of, we're talking about, I want to get this in your mind as we proceed through this next part, though, before we get into it. In that section, we're really talking about school-age bullies. But I want you to think about bullying takes place at all levels of society in all age groups. You know, it's very common and I would encourage everyone to go online and also download it. Bullying can ravage retirement facilities where older people live. And they're bullied, they're taken advantage of, and they're abused. Bullying takes place in the workplace environment. Where I came from in, in North Carolina, at least once a year, somebody shot somebody in one of the manufacturers there. And there's a lot of furniture manufacturing going on where I came from. And these facilities are enormous. And every year, at least one person got shot because of an argument that took place in the workplace. And, you know, you tend to think about how bad does it have to get before you want to go in and shoot somebody. You know, it has to get pretty bad, or a person just has to be taught not to have true care, concern, and consideration. You know, it's a lack of education. Looking over to page 135, and remember, always discussing these things with your classroom as you're going through them, your students, it says, is responding to a bully in a peaceful way the easiest thing to do? 
You know, and you see the answer right there, but ask your students. Because you're going to have somebody go, oh, yeah, yeah, it's not a problem. You know, and that's we'd like to think it's that way, but it's really not that way. It's human nature, sadly, from what we've been kind of programmed through society, through news media, um, you know, and I'm still kind of stuck on these things that I was on a long plane ride here just a couple weeks ago, and, you know, everybody wants to watch what they want to watch on the plane because the plane has unlimited movies if you want to watch them. You just put your phone in a little tray, your iPad or your, your device and just watch whatever movie you want to watch. Or you can watch educational things. Well, the person beside of me decided to watch a movie that I heard a lot about. And they were disappointed because they were flying. The flight, it was many different legs of the flight, but one only lasted like two and a half hours. Well, I guess the movie was three hours. So they didn't get to see the end of the movie. So they were really upset. And I could see why they were upset because the whole time, you know, they're sitting right beside of me so I could see what's going on. I couldn't hear it because they had uh, AirPods in. But the whole time, it was two and a half hours of killing. I mean, straight up, two and a half hours of constant killing. And I thought, I have never in my life, I've heard about this movie, and there's four of them. That'll give you an idea of what it is. And hopefully you've never seen any of them. But for two and a half hours, I would glance over as I was watching um, pretty much a, uh, an instructor who I like to watch a lot, and I learn a lot from him. Um, but I kept looking over, and I kept noticing every time I look over, the guy's killing somebody. And I would glance over every now and then, and sure enough, he was killing somebody. Glance over again, he's still killing somebody. And I thought, they made a whole movie three hours long of nothing but a man killing somebody in I don't know how many different ways. You know, that is something we used to use the Matrix and Star Wars in our Building More Excellence unit to show how many acts of violence there are in a movie. We're going to have to re-update our books and put this other one in. And since the man that plays in this movie is the same one that played in the Matrix, we can just re-up it with the same people. Uh, but I was amazed that who would want to be entertained with three hours of killing? You know, you, you think about what mind is interested in seeing that. What has that person watched so much of that it's not entertaining that it has to be something this graphic? And it was extremely graphic. You know, and I thought it was kind of bizarre that I thought, I wonder what it would be like if I was a eight-year-old child sitting beside this guy and sitting there the whole time watching what he's watching. You don't really need to hear anything for it to put an impression in your mind. You know, but anybody could have watched that. You know, it, it's, it's bizarre. It's really bizarre. And I'm not trying to identify the movie and I'm not trying to encourage anyone to watch it unless you think that three hours of your life watching pure mur murder is, is something you need to do in your life. And if that's what you think, um, our first class was in November of 2020. You should go back to the very beginning and start with the character unit. And hopefully by the time you get to this part right here and you hear this again, you'll not want to watch those movies anymore because they're not beneficial. And we covered in the self-control unit how they truly affect us. And they affect us on a very large scale. And it makes it to where, you know, is responding to bullying in a peaceful way the easiest thing to do? Not if you're trained to always get even fight back. No, it's not easy to do at all. In fact, you can think of 150 ways to kill a person um, because you've seen it. And it looks so easy. I mean, this guy never dies. He just keeps killing people. You know, it's bizarre. To me, it's totally bizarre. Um, continuing on, well, no, it's not. You know, but don't just let them say it. Talk with them about it. Discuss it. It takes a combination of self-control, courage, Humility and wisdom. Well, what is wisdom? Well, notice it says here to respond peacefully. You know, people tend to think, well, wisdom is like, you know, the owl that has the uh, graduation cap on, you know. He's the smartest guy, but he can't even figure out how many licks it takes to get to the center of a tootsie roll tootsie pop, right? You know, it's supposed to be the smartest guy in the world. Or we think of these mathematicians that take up three chalkboards writing the formula to solve something that once they solve it, only them and five other people on the face of this earth has any clue to what they're talking about. And it really didn't benefit anybody. You know, so you think about, well, that's the why, that's the wisdom. But you learn wisdom is just applying your knowledge that you've learned. 
Wisdom is taking the things that you've been taught, that you know are a benefit, that you've been able to adapt into your life, and then when you apply it, that's wisdom. A person can be full of knowledge, and they can be a complete fool. You can know everything it's right to do and still make the wrong choice. You know, foolishness comes uh, in many different forms, but if you want to display wisdom, that's taking the knowledge that you have, which means you had to go out and get some knowledge, and I'm not talking about you know showing knowledge and how to process methamphetamines or something like that. I'm talking about what's positive. And then when that's displayed, that is wisdom. Well, using I messages with bullies usually doesn't work. You know, and the, you know I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to go home and get my gun. I'm going to kick your. I'm, yeah, none of that ever works. You know, uh, there are ways to deal with bullies and they don't involve. Uh, knives, guns, baseball bats, tasers, pepper spray, they don't involve those. Uh, even though they, you know, some of these things are used, um, and I'm not trying to put down things that law enforcement use, uh, if you're dealing with somebody that is really messed up on some kind of drug, then, um, you know, that can be a challenge in itself. But we're talking about bullies. Notice here it says, for example, if the bully is only verbally abusive, it is wise to avoid being along with him or her. Try to avoid that person in order to keep confrontations down to a minimum. You know, and if you think about it, there's probably people in your life that you keep your contact down to a minimum because confrontations can tend to come up fairly easy. You know, and, and I've been in situations, I've, I've helped people, I've counseled people, I've talked to people in situations like that where sometimes it's best to avoid the other person if at all possible. Now, I don't mean ignore, and I don't mean cut off all communication. Uh, there's a lot of times where we have to communicate with each other. But if there's a time where you find yourself constantly being argumentative, then you need to find a way to... Um, you know, reduce the opportunity for that to take place. And I've also had people come to me that are married thinking, yeah, that's what I need to do. No, you can't really, that, that doesn't help you. No, no, that doesn't help you. You know, if, you, if you're going to, if you're living with someone you're married to, you need to find out how to work out the problem. That's what you said you'd do in the start, remember? <laughs> you said that you could solve these problems. That's when you begged for her and you got her, now you got to solve them. Or you begged for him, now you got to solve them. You didn't say you were going to get halfway into it and I quit. You know, this is too much. Um, you know, and this is when everybody wants to make things work. I'm talking from the ideology of everybody learning positive character. I know there's a lot of situations that take place in our society where people have to get out of situations. And I understand that. But that's due to the lack of positive character being applied into these situations. Um, you know, because... Sadly, bullies can also come in the form of husband and wife, father and son, mother and daughter, you know, mother and son. Um, these things can take place in all aspects of life. Um, with what we've read, let's go to the next slide here in the self-control unit to get this into our mind. And this was about how to deal with anger. Um, because we're talking about here using self-control, courage, and humility, how to respond to a bully. Well, usually anger is going to want to come up in us. And, of course, this was one of the steps that we need to use in controlling our anger. And it said, use your positive character traits. That's the things you've learned. That's the things that you're working, you're applying, you're going through that VIP, that value imitate practice to apply these things into your life. And it says, notice here, the positive traits of humility and compassion can help you appropriately deal with anger. Humble people do not feel that they need to win every argument. Someone intentionally harms others. Uh, the important character trait of forgiveness can also help you handle your anger appropriately. It is impossible uh, to remain angry with someone that you forgive. And that's a true statement. If you truly have forgiven someone, it's impossible to remain angry with them. Uh, the very process of forgiveness requires you to let go of any hurt feelings that someone might have caused you. Forgiving others is not the easiest thing to do. Uh, but run resentment, but run, well, excuse me, but the flip side is to bear grudge and to hold on to resentment. In the long run, resentment will cause you mental, emotional, and physical stress. Just as it takes character uh, to forgive others, remember to be willing uh, to apologize when you are in the wrong. The words, I'm sorry, 
will you please forgive me, are powerful tools to diffuse anger. Even when uh, what you say is right, be willing to compromise and humble yourself. Accept that other, that the other person uh, might be right also. And notice here, this was a uh, note we put out. It says, holding up to resentment is like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Um, and it kind of shows what goes on in a situation. If it's a situation to where we think that we always have to be right, you know, I, I've experienced things where I really thought I was right. I really thought I had all the facts. I thought I was right. And I found out after going through conversation that I was right, but I also found out there was a better way. The other person wasn't wrong either. There was a better way to deal with something. There was a better way to handle something. And that's one thing that we learn in the Peaceful Solution. Some of the things we think are right, we'll find out are not right. And I've learned that too. You think that handling or processing or doing something, this is the right way, and you find out, no, no, that's not going to help. And learning through experience is not the best way to do it. You know, there's other people that have experienced things that we can actually use in our lives to help us get through these things. But there's a lot of times in our life that we're going to find that people could be younger, could be older. Sometimes you can learn valuable lessons from a child. And sometimes you can learn valuable lessons from people that are a lot older. Not because they've experienced, but because they've seen it. You know, they've seen it done. They didn't experience it themselves, but they've seen it. And then some people have literally experienced it. And all of these things are important that we take this information, that knowledge, so we can apply it as wisdom. Continuing on here, it says, for example, if the bully is only verbally abusive, once again, it is wise uh, to avoid being alone with him or her. As we said, try to avoid that person in order to keep a confrontation down to a minimum. However, if a situation should arise where you are being antagonized and provoked, then be wise and be humble and get away as soon as possible. If a peer who is a bully verbally attacks you, um, you, might, uh, you might respond by saying things like, I no, I'm no longer going to listen to this, I'm leaving, then leave. Never retaliate, it only eggs, the, it only eggs them on. Um, you know, I'm trying to, as you read that, a lot of people will tell you that when someone physically attacks you, you know, they're verbally attacking you, and then they physically attack you. And you look at them and say, well, I'm no longer going to listen to this. I've had students go, that doesn't sound like that's going to help me at all. Because what? Okay, I'm no longer going to listen to this. That doesn't make them stop. And no matter how much I want to say I'm not hearing what they're saying, I'm still hearing what they're saying. You know, there are some situations where you can walk away. But if you walk away, go to a trusted authority figure. Don't just walk away and think it's going to disappear. Don't just walk away and think, well, I've done what the peaceful solution told me to do. I'm not going to listen to it anymore. You know, the old talk to the hand. Well, that doesn't really get you very far. You have to go to someone that can help you. You have to go to someone that can get something done. And I've heard a lot of times, we go to people and they never help us. You know, I've seen situations to where people think that things aren't being done, but they are being done. But a lot of times when you're dealing with bullies or you're dealing with situations where there's a lot of confrontation, you have to deal with things. You don't always set the person up that was bullied to see everything that's being done to the bully. You know, if we're being corrected, you usually try to do those things in private. Try to help somebody in private. It's not like you want to get them on the 6 o'clock news like society wants to do and tell everybody's dirty laundry. You know, if you do something that's wrong, you're thankful if someone comes to you in private and helps you fix the situation instead of airing it out in front of everybody else. That's actually showing care, consideration, and concern. Um, and that tends to be the way that things are dealt with. But a lot of times when people don't see that correction come down on somebody else, well, that's the retaliation that's in, so involved in someone. Well, they need to be corrected. Well, how do you know they were not corrected? Well, they're still doing it. That doesn't mean they were not corrected. It just means they choose not to do what's right. And this correction is a process. But we all, there's not one of us sitting in this room that cannot be corrected for something. Does that mean that we should all, as we leave the door, figure out what it is and correct each other before we leave? 
No, not really. Uh, but it, it would help if we if we would do less things that need to be corrected. And that's a lifelong process, you know. But when it comes to people that are bullying, you know, and I've learned this about, um, you know, this word narcissistic. When you deal with people that are diagnosed and are that way, you can look at them and tell them you shouldn't be lying. You shouldn't be doing these things. That will not change the process in their mind. Um, and the reason I tie this into bullying, because I read an article here not long ago where it talks about a lot of people that are lifelong bullies also are diagnosed as narcissistic people. And when you read about it, it's very strong. They say there's not a cure or a medication you can give someone for this. It's something that has affected their brain mentally, um, and we'll get into this as we proceed into other parts of the peaceful solution, um, but it's a chemical change in the brain because of an action that has been committed, possibly not even by the person, could have been by their parents. But it's something that will affect them, and the reason that I say that you have to be careful when you deal with people like this is because when you read about these things, and, and I would encourage people to read about it, educate yourself with it, because it shows how, how you would perceive something, they don't perceive it that way. Um, where you would want to have empathy, like we teach in The Peaceful Solution, someone who is narcissistic, they, they don't even comprehend what empathy is. All they care about is themselves and how you are benefiting them, and then when you don't benefit them anymore, it's like squashing a bug under their shoe. They could care less. You're done. And then they go into the next person. And then they go into the next person. And then eventually they start coming back to the people they've already destroyed relationships with and they try it again. You know, and the sad part about it is that these are people in society that really need help. Can they be a positive person? Absolutely. Can they learn to practice self-control? Absolutely. Because you don't have to be labeled a narcissistic to be a negative person. And if you're labeled as narcissistic, it doesn't mean you're a negative person. It means you have something that's within you that you might not even be the cause of. But you have to learn to process it. You know, so think about that. I bring that out because when we deal with people, just because we see something as hurtful and negative doesn't mean everyone does. If you see someone, um, and I've seen this. I was in a different country. Uh, this was about, I think it was about three months ago. And I couldn't really understand everything that was being said because the mother was talking so fast to her child and I couldn't understand the language because it was so fast. But I could understand when she was slapping her child all over the face uh, down the street. And I did comprehend the little girl had asked for a bottle of water. And the mother would say somebody didn't have the money for it. But it was more than that, she told her. And she must have smacked this child in the face six or seven times. I mean, hard. And the mother was big. She wasn't a little woman. She was smacking this child enough to where it was jarring the child's head back. And I thought, man, if you had done that in the United States, which is not very far from where I'm standing, someone would have called the police on you. And I asked someone that was there, I said, what would they do to someone like this? That's every day here. They don't do anything. They can't afford to put people like this in jail. You know, there's nothing that can be done about this. Well... What do you think that little girl is going to do when she becomes a mom? She's going to do the very same thing because that's what was done to her. That's what she knows. You know how much it hurts you when you're done that way, but it tends to be if we can't retain that hurt and how much it really made us feel bad, if that can't be retained when we go into adulthood, then we regurgitate the very same thing as we teach in the Peaceful Solution, garbage in, garbage out. It's the same thing with bullying. Uh, whether it's a parent to a child or a peer to another peer, a lot of times what we're seeing is things that they're just regurgitating what's been done to them. And we really have to use empathy, and that doesn't mean put yourself in the other person's shoe and smack them back. No, that means try to understand why is this person thinking this is the way to deal with problems. Why is this person thinking that this is a way to solve a problem? And when you go to an authority figure, you tend to think, a lot of people tend to think that you're going to tell what this person did that was wrong. When you get through the peaceful solution and you start putting all these pieces together, when you go and report, a, report someone who's bullying, you're actually going to try to find help for that person. It's not as much as 
try to get this person to leave you alone as you're trying to find help for the individual because what they're doing is not right and it's going to lead them into even a worse situation. Not everybody's going to try to use the peaceful solution. Somebody will retaliate eventually. But a bully is always hoping that no one retaliates. Continuing on here, it says, whenever there is any type of physical attack, it would be best to inform an authority figure or a trusted adult. Do not keep these situations to yourself. You know, looking at the next slide we have here, this is from the self-control unit, um, page 144. And it says, in developing positive character, what you stand for should be moral excellence. And we'll get into a book eventually that's called Building Moral Excellence. What you value is life yours and others. Your top priority should be to develop positive character traits like self-control, responsibility, and humility. By doing this, you can become the best you can be. Once you have determined who you are as an individual, stick to it. Set your mind in advance. Remember, you've heard that so many times, and you can refer all the way back to page 80 in the character unit with what it means to set your mind in advance not to allow anyone to influence you to do what you know is wrong. This is why it is up to you to distinguish between a positive and a negative influence. You know, and when you think about those things, looking down here to let's take a closer look at humility, um, I remember uh, the author of The Peaceful Solution told me one time, he goes, you want to know one key to know how someone's not humble? And I'm like, Sure, that would be interesting. I thought, I wonder what he's going to tell me that I said or did. <laughs> and he goes, if you ever hear a person starts out and they start talking about how humble a person they are. He goes, it takes a proud person to brag about being humble. And I thought about it, and it's, it's pretty much right. Humility has come through your actions, and other people will notice it, but it's displayed through how you conduct yourself. It's not displayed through you sitting back and going, man, I, I just, I'm the most humble person I've ever met. You know, and you want to look at that person and go, you never met anyone else? You know, because that's a pretty proud statement. Uh, but that's not what you should do. That's just sarcasm. Um, but let's take a closer look at humility. Um, before we get into that, let's go to the next slide here out of the acceptance unit. Um, and we're wanting to put these things in our mind because they all fall in together. Because humility involves, you know, the the... the the greatest regret you can ever have is when you start arguing with people who are your friends. People who you know would actually do no harm to you. But you still have disagreements. But you know, even though you might disagree on something today and three months from now, you can't even remember what the argument was about. But you can still destroy and damage relationships because of these disagreements. People separate. People can... Um, you know, that can truly take what was once a really great thing and, and really break it down to where the benefits that could have been gained from this are just destroyed. But here in the acceptance unit, and this was building off of the, the four stages of developing friendships, it says conflicts with, uh, within friendships can usually fall into two categories. Those are based on individual preferences and those that are based on moral principles. If you and your friends disagree over personal preferences, remember to be respectful of their feelings. That's easily said, but not easily done. Um, you know, and, and I know that from my own life experiences that we can hurt feelings of other people and not even understand it because you get so caught up in the heat of the moment. And it's not that you don't understand it as much as you're not caring. You're not showing true respect of care, consideration, and concern. Notice it says, don't put them down because of their ideas are different from yours. Use self-control and humility to keep the problem from getting out of hand. Simple words such as, I apologize, I was wrong, uh, if you were wrong, or please, can really cool things down when arguments heat up. You know, one thing to remember that an apology is an influence. And it's an influence to try to bring the situation back down to a level to where uh, common sense can be used. Uh, it's not just words. You're trying to influence a situation to de-escalate. Holding on to anger, as uh, we read here, hostility and resentment can destroy the best of friends. Stop and consider what is really important, winning a petty argument or practicing your skills in communication, self-control, and humility. Look for ways to compromise so that each person's needs are met and no one feels like their ideas or opinions are rejected. 
you know and that that can be very hard especially when you get a lot of people together that are responsible for something um, you'll get a lot of ideas and a lot of great ideas but a lot of times you can only use one idea and sometimes if you have an idea this is where humility comes into play you know when well I had a great idea too why are you not using my great idea my great idea was great you said it was great you know well there was a better idea oh okay well you never use my ideas you know and that's how it can become but you know in reality that's not true a lot of times I've seen uh, I've seen a group of people that are all peaceful solution instructors to where and this is truly shows where the peaceful solution helps an idea can come out from a person they can propose something and before something is confirmed they'll take pieces of 10 great ideas and put them all into one and that great idea becomes an even greater idea because a lot of pieces a lot of opinions through positive character a lot of input was put in and then you also reference back to well this was the guidelines to begin with and all of those pieces comply with that and you really have where you have a group of people that can truly come up with really great ideas and it's multiple people involved in this and, you know and, and that really shows when character education and the peaceful solution and positive characters at its best when that can take place because that's when it's a benefit to the people not just to the people sitting in the room but to the people that are affected by the decisions and you're always trying to make life better um, that's the goal of the peaceful solution to always make life better that was the that was the goal of the author of the peaceful solution and it wasn't just for the people that were around him it was on a global scale that he was seeking this to make life better for everyone people you've never met people you've never talked to people you've never heard from to help this with everyone you know very different from bullying very different from a group having the aggression against someone but to help someone so looking here let's take a closer look at humility we've already read a couple things from the self-control unit about humility but humility is a positive character trait a humble person has the ability to sacrifice being right in order to avoid a confrontation now that doesn't mean if you're telling someone the stove is hot I just turned it off no it's not no it's hot I just turned it off no it's not that doesn't mean you should okay well go ahead and stick your hand on it you'll find out doesn't mean that's the way to go there's sometimes you need to stand firm in something you know if somebody's gonna drink something well you know that's that's not what you think it is you know that drinks been sitting there for three days no it hasn't I just put it there Yeah, it's been sitting there for three days I'm telling you it's been sitting there no it hasn't you know I've, I've had it before man have I learned the hard way it's where I, I have drinks that I put you know lids on and of course I'm notorious for leaving a drink on my work table at my store and then I'll bring another one and I'll stick it right beside of it and they're identical to each other and somebody that is using common sense would go I should probably take this cup and wash it it's been sitting there for three days and when you've had tea sitting in a cup for three days in Texas in the summertime you know when you picked up the wrong cup and you take a big swig and you can't spit it out fast enough you know and I remember one time uh, a great friend of mine um, you know he's no longer alive but he used to come in my store and he would always point out things to me and years ago I have no idea why but I used to like this really sweet drink that was in a green can and I have no idea why I liked it because I can't stomach it now but I used to like it and he told me he goes you know in the summertime you should put a lid on that thing I said, it's a canned drink you pop it open put something over it. bees get into that stuff and I thought what this guy's nuts until I drank it and a honeybee stung me in the back of the throat one day and then you know it was a very humbling experience to go back and go you know I I about didn't get that stinger out of the back of my throat the other day and he just looked and shook his head and he goes I told you I said, but how did you know? He goes, because I did it too. <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, I guess I should have listened. He goes, now, when you go tell somebody else, don't tell them that you did it, but tell them don't do this. Um, you know, but I learned it the hard way. I thought, that I'd ne never heard of that before. But yeah, it did, and it was not a pleasant experience. You know, if someone is allergic to bees, it would be a horrible experience. I was, I was very blessed that uh, 
it was hard getting the stinger out because the stinger was still there and it took a while and it i couldn't talk very well but uh it took a day or two to get over it but i learned my lesson uh with that and that might be the last time i drank that drink too but it's not the only drink that'll do that but i learned it i was warned and i still didn't pay attention and just a few days later it took place but continuing on here, it said, Being humble should never be confused with allowing a bully to take advantage of you or being weak. You know, and that especially, I can't stress, we've talked about it before, being humble never means to sacrifice yourself as a person. And I mean, if someone is wanting to do something to you that's inappropriate, and this is not just to young children, but more specifically to young children, if someone who you think you can trust tries to do something to you that you know is inappropriate, being humble does not mean letting them do it. Uh, being humble is always evolving and revolving around positive character. Negative character does not require you to be humble. If somebody wants to do something to you that is negative, um, be smart. Be courageous. You know, don't don't have regrets. Being humble doesn't mean letting somebody to do something to you that's inappropriate. And that means taking your things, stealing, whatever it is. You know, it's not just, uh, it can be things that are, you know, physical, but it can also be other things. So always remember that. It takes self-control to stop and consider the best and most effective way to handle a situation. Some situations can be dangerous if you do not respond carefully. You know, and I've seen, and I know there's a teacher watching right now that understands perfectly what I'm, what I'm reading here about how you respond to a situation and respond carefully. Um, because when you live in the United States, you tend to think everything's smooth sailing. Everything's not smooth sailing in other countries around the world. Where in the United States, somebody might do something wrong to you and you report it, and the authorities deal with it, it doesn't work that way in every country. Uh, sometimes the authorities cannot be your best friend. Uh, sometimes you can find yourself in situations you don't want to be in just by trying to do the right thing. Um, I know I've got friends in Nigeria that are going through a lot of things to where, you know, they just banned them from even traveling to the United States because their currency is so far out of management right now they they literally got rid of their naira they went over to another currency and it's still so unbalanced people can't even buy a loaf of bread right now paying a light bill keeping your phone data on your phone that's almost impossible right now well why is that taking place ask somebody from nigeria and they'll tell you it's a lot to do with bullying a lot of bullying and taking advantage of those who are considered lesser people and it's not just the leaders of Nigeria bullying the people. Nigeria as a country have been bullied from other countries. Uh, the taking advantage of people has just proceeded on down from other countries into those people. And sadly, the people that work the hardest are the ones that suffer the most. But it's like this in many different countries. Um, and I'm not saying the United States doesn't have its own form of it, but it can get very deadly in certain areas of this world. In order to prevent making the situation worse, notice you might need to be humble, apologize, and even walk away. You know, and those situations come up even when you know you're the one that's being done wrong. Sometimes you just have to walk away and let things go. And this could be something as a pencil. It could be something, you know, that's a little bit more expensive, like a jacket. It could be something that's hundreds of thousands of dollars. But it doesn't, it's not measured in the amount of money. It's measured in safety and what can literally be done when you go to an authority, when you go to someone that goes to help you, and then what is the result to come back from it? You know, life is always the most important thing. That's always the most important thing. And then trying to get things done through positive character, through using morality, that always needs to be sought, but that doesn't mean it'll always come out into your advantage because um, not everybody's practicing the peaceful solution. And here at the bottom of the page it says, Bullies disregard and disrespect the basic rights of others, which is to reach their full potential in an environment that is free from fear and hostility. In some areas of life, that is what people use to try to keep uh, control of things, is fear and hostility. We're going to stop right there. Next class, which will be um, this Wednesday, July 5th, 
Um, and for those of you that are on vacation, you can still watch on the internet. You know, we'll still be there on the internet. Um, page 136 is where we're going to pick up with with bullying in schools. But really think about the things we've talked about tonight because as we proceed more, um, we have a lot of adults sitting in this classroom, a lot of adults watching. Um, we're specifically talking about school bullying, but we're trying to bring in other forms and fashion because it doesn't stop once people leave the schools. So always keep that in mind. So once again, we're going to pick up next class on page 136, 530, this coming Wednesday. Thank you very much for joining us.